In this video, we'll look at the molecular geometry and bond angles for SF2. This is sulfur difluoride. We'll also look at the electron geometry for this SF2 molecule here. So we have this chart here, and if we look at the number of things attached to this central sulfur atom, we can see we have two atoms here and then two lone pairs. So we have one, two, three. We have four things on our central sulfur atom. Since we have two lone pairs, so we have four things and two lone pairs, we come over here and we have a bent molecular geometry. The bond angles should be 109.5. These are the ideal bond angles. Let's take a look at a three-dimensional model and see what this looks like. So if you imagine this is our central sulfur atom, we're going to add two fluoride atoms. So there's one, then we add the other one, they spread out, they push to be as far away from each other as they can. But we also have those two lone pairs. We add one lone pair, everything pushes away from itself, and then we add one more, and we end up with this. And this is a bent molecular geometry. And because these two fluorines are very electronegative, we would expect the bond angle to be less. In fact, this bond angle here would be 98.3. And that's because these are very electronegative atoms pushing away from these two electron clouds up here around the lone pairs. If you wanted to know the electron geometry, you'd take into account everything, and you have one, two, three, four, these four things here, and this would be a tetrahedral electron geometry. So the molecular geometry, that's the bent, but the electron geometry, taking into account these lone pairs, that would be tetrahedral. Let's go back to our table here. If you're using the AXN notation, where A, that's the central atom, that's the sulfur, X, that's the number of atoms attached. We have the two, so AX2, and then N, that's the lone pairs. There's the two lone pairs there. You would have AX2, N2, and if you looked that up, that would also be bent. You get the same answer. Note again the bond angles for this molecule. It won't be the ideal 109.5. We're looking more at this 98.3, and that's due to the electronegativity of the fluorine atoms. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry, electron geometry, and bond angles for SF2, sulfur difluoride. Thanks for watching.